Daniel Dennett is Austin B. Fletcher Professor of Philosophy at Tufts University. His books include Consciousness Explained, Darwin's Dangerous Idea, and Freedom Evolves. I interviewed him at his home in Massachusetts. Okay, well, first of all, Dan, thanks for taking the time. You're welcome. Um, I, uh, I'm looking forward to talking about consciousness and evolution and free will, each of which you've devoted uh, at least a book to. Um, I wanted to start off, though, with uh, this, this crusade you've gotten involved with lately on behalf of a group called Brights. Mm-hmm. Now, Interesting use of the word crusade. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, a lot of people are doing it these days. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes it's ill-advised. Yes. In this context, I think it's, it's fairly harmless. But um, the, the um, uh, Brights in, the, in, this, in this context are not smart people, but it's a term that's now being used. Uh, to refer to people who reject supernatural explanations. That's right. And I guess loosely speaking, you could say that they tend to be either agnostics or atheists. Yeah, that's right. And, um, and, and you, you've said, uh, quote, the time has come for us brights to come out of the closet um, and, and to demand bright rights. Um, so for starters, uh, I'll let you come out of the closet as clearly as possible. Would you call yourself an atheist or an agnostic? Well, I don't like the term atheist because it usually means somebody who's going around upbraiding people and trying to force them to listen to his arguments for why there is no God. Um, I don't think there's a God, so I'm an atheist, but I don't, I don't make a deal of it. I think it, it, it's not that I passionately believe there is no God. It's that, of course, there isn't a God, but so what? So, it, so the difference in your mind is not one of how confident you are that there's not a God. I mean, you're 100% sure there's not a God. 100% am I 100% sure of anything. Okay. I'm as sure of it as I am of anything, yeah, I guess. Okay. Uh, the, but not 100%. I mean, the reason I right. ask is because that, that version of atheism has always struck me as in some technical sense logically indefensible, right? I mean... You can't prove a negative. Right. I think it was Bertrand Russell once said uh, he couldn't prove that there was not a teapot orbiting Mars. Right. So he's a teapot agnostic. I'm a teapot agnostic with regard to God, too, I suppose. I can't prove that God doesn't exist. Right. And what, what are you... For one thing, the reason I can't prove that is that apparently no two people mean the same thing by God. Right. And... Some people, what they mean by God is nature. Well, that exists, and they just they, they worship nature. Right. Mm, so do I, in a way. Does that mean I believe nature is God? Oh, who knows? Yeah. Um, uh, it's not supernatural. Okay. It's uh, wonderful as all get out, but it isn't supernatural. Okay. And do you do you feel you're missing anything? Um, I mean, do, do you wish? Do you wish you could believe in God? Is there no. no void in your life? No. Uh, in fact, I think, I think that's actually a much more interesting question for most to ask most people, or actually it's hard to ask them because they don't want to answer it. Uh, uh, I have a feeling that not that many people actually believe in God. Many people believe in belief in God. That is, they think it's a good thing, and they either... They try to believe in God. They hope they could believe in God. They wish they could believe in God. And they say they believe in God. They, they go through all the motions. They, they try very hard to be devout. And sometimes they succeed. And for periods of their lives, they actually do, in some sense, believe that there's a God. And they think they're the better for it. Um, otherwise, they behave like people who probably don't believe in God. Very few people behave as if they really believe in God. A lot of people behave as if they believe they should believe in God. Well, how would you behave if you believed in God? You would perhaps, I mean, and some people do this, uh, be prepared to take what other people would call, call suicidal risks because you believe God is going to be there to save you. Uh, you would be prepared to... Uh, 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 give away everything that you own because God commanded you to do it, and so forth. Well, yeah, although there you're actually talking about a specific conception of God. Yeah, right. Any conception right. of God that would make you think you could take risks without fear of death. No. Um, and, and I guess that, that's... Well, that's, that's one of the problems with belief in God is that it is so 
amorphous and undefined. It's not oh, like well, believing no, in helium or believing. What I'm saying is there can be different definitions. Oh, it may sure. also be amorphous, but I, but I'm just referring to the problem of there being sure different, many different definitions. Right. So. The, the um, but along those lines, are you? You're rejecting also the idea of kind of higher purpose of any kind. Uh, higher than our purposes? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. And um, on the question of evolution, I think um, you, I think you and I agree that evolution has, in a certain probabilistic sense, a kind of direction. That is to say, natural selection, once it acquired much momentum, was likely to produce um, diverse forms of life, increasingly yep. complex life, yep. and even properties like intelligence yes. were not at all unlikely, even if even if there was no predicting which lineage would lead to them and so on. Yeah. So you do believe evolution was kind of headed somewhere. Um, yeah, headed somewhere. But not by design. But not by design, and uh, uh, not guaranteed to get there in any finite stretch of time. Well, right. Yeah, bad uh, things can happen. My... my uh, uh, favorite image of this is um, if you think of uh, going up being the sort of rise in complexity up to intelligence and so forth. Yes, this is what we've seen, but of course at any moment it could just crash. Sure. But then it would go up again right. and crash and go up again and we'd have a sort of sawtooth. But yes, that the trend is in some sense, up that there is a progress in design. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And um, is it inconceivable to you that, I mean, you can imagine how someone could have a strictly materialist conception of natural selection as I do, believe in the directionality that we just discussed mm -hmm. as I do, um, and still think that it's uh, possible that there is some larger purpose unfolding or that, that natural selection actually was the product of design. I mean, you can imagine being basically a materialist and still thinking that it's subordinate, natural selection subordinate to some larger purpose we don't understand. There actually was a designer of natural selection in some sense. Uh, uh, yes, I can, I can imagine that in some loose sense. Okay. I don't know that that's a coherent idea, but it's not obviously incoherent. And you certainly don't buy it in any event. I don't buy it. No. Okay. Um, let me suggest that there's actually ways you could appraise that hypothesis. In other words, sure. there could be evidence for it or evidence against it. Yeah. And, and let me... There could. Let, I agree. Okay. Let, let me, let me um, be clear that I'm using design in a very loose sense. But I, I, think, uh, I think you and I would agree that you can speak of individual organisms as being designed, at least in quotes, oh, yeah. by a, by, but not by an intelligent being, by a process of natural Absolutely. selection. Absolutely, yes. And that process imbues them with uh, what you might call purpose or goals. Absolutely. It, 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 but they, as they real act, as purpose could ever be. You mean getting genes into the next generation? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. okay. That's the criterion of their design. Yeah. Now, there's a, uh, a famous... Uh, Episode in intellectual history that that was the, that, that that inspired Richard Dawkins to call his book *The Blind Watchmaker*, involving this long dead uh, theologian William Paley. Mm -hmm. What happened was he argued. He said, "Look, you can you can look at living forms and tell that there's a god. It's like if you if you're walking through a field, you pick up a watch. Obviously, it was designed to do something. That's it's yep. functionally integrated and so on." He said. You look, look at uh, animals. It's the same way. You can, you can yeah. tell there's a God. Now, I agree. agree. He was right that there had to be a process of design, right? Absolutely right. Okay. Now, here's among the things that I think you would agree uh, are evidence in favor of that, that hypothesis. If you watch uh, an animal um, grow from a, a single germ cell, there's a directional growth toward functional integration at higher and higher levels of organization. Mm, um, 